ticking only about 2% slower than clocks way out there. So we're not going to get our 6,000 years explaining all of the universe's history that way. So that's not significant. But what about the past? Was the universe different in the past? And the answer is yes. It was probably smaller. We have scientific evidence and biblical evidence for the expansion of space and the expansion of all of the universe. Now the scientific evidence we'll talk about later is the redshift of light from distant galaxies. The further away a galaxy is from us, the more its light is shifted toward the red end of the spectrum. Would you consider that discovery one of the great discoveries of the 20th century? Absolutely. Our, it revolutionized us. Um, Edwin Hubble found that out. And when he found out that these things that they called white nebulae, or they looked like just clouds, were actually outside the Milky Way and much further away, millions of light years away. It revolutionized our view of the universe. Most people don't realize how revolutionary that discovery was. It right. took place in around 1929. Yes. And it had a profound effect on the thinking of 20th century man. It's not, this is not something that's highlighted in most history books. That's a very good point. It's the first time that we became aware of really just how big a universe is. God says, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Well, we didn't really realize how high the heavens were before, and so we didn't have a good idea of how deep and large the thoughts of God are. But he anticipated us in Scripture. He had 17 verses like this one in Isaiah talking about God who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. People think of the heavens being the stars, but really if you go back to Genesis, the heavens are something that God created before he created the stars. So the heavens, if you look through Scripture and do a little Bible, Bible study, you find out that the heavens are essentially the space where the stars are, and often the stars are called the host of heaven. He populated this space with stars, but the space is what he's stretching out, like a tent curtain. As far as revealing the profound scientific content of the Bible, this is, is probably one of the best examples I know of, something that anticipated by thousands of years predated the discovery of other galaxies and pre predated the discovery of, re of redshift. It's almost enough to make the hair on your head rise up when you really realize what God was saying there. It was only until the general theory of relativity came along where you picture space itself as some kind of material that can be stretched and bent that the possibility of expanding space itself came out because the Big Bang Theory and general relativity has space itself, the, the fabric of space, if you want to call it that, being stretched out and carrying the galaxies with it. And that stretching stretches out the wavelength of light traveling through space. And the, even this analogy of, of the heavens being like a curtain. Exactly. I mean, that's, that's exactly the picture that general relativity shows or, or indicates. And all of modern physics has that picture. It's not spoken of very clearly by modern physicists, but they're beating around this bush all the time. And I talk about that in Appendix B and Appendix C, that the space in which we exist, though we can't perceive it, is not empty. It's a stuff of some sort. And general rel relativity talks about it as being a bendable and stretchable kind of stuff. And that's how the red shifts occur in relativity. It's a stretching effect. You stretch out space. Through this space is moving light waves, and the waves themselves get stretched out in wavelength. So it's not a Doppler shift, as many people in undergraduate school learned. But when you get into grad school, as I point out here, you learn that it's space itself being stretched out which produces the red shift all of this was to make 
the point that in the past the cosmos was smaller, both from the biblical evidence for stretching of space and the redshift scientific evidence. So if the cosmos was smaller, then would that have had some effect, something that we need to reckon with? And the answer is yes. Uh, when, the, when the cosmos was smaller, there would be a stage during this expansion when the clocks at the center would be very slow. And that would occur with the cosmos not being 20 billion light years in radius, but maybe half a billion light years in radius. Now that's still not real small. The, the, the galaxies wouldn't be running into each other at that point, and the forces would not be that much greater. But it works out from the equations that the forces times that distance are great enough to put the center of the cosmos at a critical point and clocks near the center would be very slow and other processes further out would be their normal speed. But looked at from the center, it would look like everything out there is in fast forward, like a video in fast forward. Things moving very fast and the light moving in towards us very quickly. Of course you wouldn't be able to see that, but if you could have, that's what it would have looked like. So I'm proposing that on the fourth day of creation, things were happening very slow here. If you'd been way out there looking back at the Earth, you would have seen nothing happening. The Earth would not be rotating, nothing would be happening on it, and things near the Earth in our solar system and the near few hundred to few thousand light years around us, not much happening. So it's over a general area. And this, I'm proposing, would happen on the fourth day of creation. Most of the expansion of, of the universe would have happened during that time. The bottom line is, if you consider what Adam would have seen and Eve after their creation, they're looking up into the night sky, how old would we say the universe is for them? And what I'm saying is that during six days of ordinary days on Earth, billions of years worth of events elapsed in the distant sky. So the age of the universe when Adam and Eve saw it would be six days Earth standard time because the time that God tells us he made the universe in is framed in our frame of reference. He defined a day in Genesis 1-5. He called the light day and the darkness he called night and there was evening and there was morning one day. And further down in the fourth day of creation he says he established the sun, moon, and stars to mark off clear periods of time as seen from the earth, days and years. So when he said in Exodus 20.11, for example, that in six days he made the heavens and the earth, 